This program is proudly brought to you by Barristop, Cubba, Breeder's Choice and Studio Noah Pet Photography. This program is brought to you by Barristop, Kong, Breeder's Choice and the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Welcome to another great season of All About Animals. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jake. On today's show, I go for a camel ride. And I meet up with Australian Diamonds netballer, Erin Bell. Then we chat to some kids about owning alpacas as pets. After the show, make sure you go to Facebook and Twitter for cool updates. So sit back and enjoy another great show of All About Animals. Hi, I'm here with Kim who's going to chat to me about camels and if I'm really lucky I might even get to go for a ride. So Kim, is it true that they store water in their hump? No, they actually store fat in their hump. Okay, so that means wh where do they put all the water? No, they just turn the water into, into fat Yep. to live in harsh times when they're in the desert and, that, and there's no water and feed around, they can live. I've heard that they drink a lot of water, so how much water can they drink? It just depends. Look, um, when we get them down out the wild, they won't drink for oh, a month or so sometimes. Really? Because they don't know what a water trough is. And a they can month. drink up to 40, 50 litres in, in one drink. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so how long could they last, last for in total without water? Uh, probably up to a couple of months. A couple yeah. of months, yep. so like two or three months? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and um, I've heard that they can run quite fast as well. Yeah, we... Um, We've raced them for many years. They can run up to about 50 kilometres an hour. 50 k. So that means you'd be like driving in your car, going to work, and then you'd see this guy on a camel shoot past. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so is it true, Kim, that camels spit just like alpacas? They can do. They, they're normally pretty good, but um, like any animal, they can get cantankerous and they'll yep. spit and bite. And Are they usually quite well-tempered? Normally they're fairly good, yeah, unless they sort of get upset or, you know, if someone's cruel to them, they just revenge, really. What's one of the attack attacking points? They will strike at you with their front legs. To, yep. You know, if you're hurting them or bite you. Yep. And um, yeah, that's how they will spit at you too, but not very often. So where do the camels come from? These are originally out the desert. They reckon there's about 100,000 in the wild there now. In Origin Australia? In yeah. Australia, yeah. Yep. Originally the Afghans brought them out and then they let them go into the wild and now they actually taking them back, exporting them back overseas because Australia's got disease-free camels in the best, like in the the best camels. Wow. Best in the world. That's good. <laughs> if you touch the nose piercing, would it aggravate them? They're normally pretty good, but both of them have broken their nose pegs off and I put them in before I come down. So yep. they're just a bit touchier. Oh, okay. But normally they're fine. Though. Do they only drink water or do they, what food yeah. do they eat? Hay, grass, any rough feed. Well, thanks, Kim, for sharing the camels with me. No worries, doll. Thank you. Yeah, they're surprisingly comfortable and they can go long distances. And if they can run as fast as a car, I should probably get one because I don't need a license and they're much cheaper. Put it on the Christmas list. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go for a ride, eh? I should think so. Oh, <laughs> Nave. Come on, girl. <laughs> you right? All right. Onwards. Ragdolls are so cute and I've always wanted to learn more about them. So let's go chat to Anne and Brian who breed them. So Anne, why are they called ragdolls? Because they don't look like dolls to me. Because when you pick them up, they're very floppy. And if you accidentally drop them or something, they won't land on their feet. And if they go to sleep on the couch and they turn over, they just go drop, plonk. And how big can they grow to? The boys can grow quite large, 10 kilos or more. Oh, wow. And the girls, they stay to about six kilos. And Anne, how much do they cost? Um, around uh, $600. Sometimes it's a bit more if you buy them from pet shops, but they're around about $600. And for mm -hmm. a breeder, they usually come dissexed and vaccinated and everything by the time you get them at 12 weeks old. So would you recommend ragdolls as a family pet? 
Definitely. I think they're wonderful family pet. They're wonderful with children. They're a companion cat. They're not a vocal cat, you know, meowy cat. They're very quiet. They love sitting down just watching TV <laughs> with you or just playing with you in general. And I love them to death. She's so cute. I want to take her home. No, you can't take her home. <laughs> Thanks for your time today. Today we're learning all about the alpaca. I've heard that they make great guard dogs, so we're going to chat to Maddie to find out. Hi, Maddie. Hi, guys. So what made you decide to get an alpaca as a pet? Well, they keep the foxes away from the sheep and chickens. OK. And what do you like most about the alpacas? Well, they're really kind, they're really nice to people, and they're very fluffy. Yes. <laughs> And do you need a big area to keep alpacas? Well, not really. At, at least they have like some things to do. So what would you feed an alpaca? Well, they're pretty fussy eaters. They eat hay and loosen and alpaca pellets. So how much would it cost to get an alpaca? Well, it'd be at least $1,000. Yep. yep, OK. And would that include all the equipment that you need? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, cool. And what about their guarding? Well, they spit at animals that threat them. So. Yeah. yeah. So they can be good to keep strangers away. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And they look after the lambs. Yeah. yeah. So do they like other pets? Yeah, they, they like a lot of other pets, like <laughs> animals. So like they, they're happy with sheep and dogs, cats, yeah. and all that stuff? <laughs> wow. So they're very friendly animals. <laughs> yeah. So Maddie, do they like living with other alpacas? Well, they like a friend and they're really good together, so... OK. And do they need, like, microchips or, or fleeing or...? No, not like really. No? Yeah. OK. Well, this sounds really awesome. I think I should get one for my backyard. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for your time. Yeah. <laughs> After the break, I visit Gorge Wildlife Park to learn about the fruit bat. And later in the show, I meet one of Australia's netball stars, Erin Bell. Now, all cat owners want to keep their cats safe. And one of our viewers told us about the Ocelot system, which does this and more. Let's go check it out. Hi, I'm here with Mia who's going to chat to me about the interesting ocelot system. Hi Mia. Hi. So how does this ocelot system work? It's simple. There's an ocelot paddle on top of the fence and when the cat tries to grip onto it, it spins and the cat falls safely back on the ground. So how does it keep your cat safe? Well, it keeps the cats in the yard instead of getting hit by cars or bitten by snakes or attacked by dogs. OK, that's good. So how much does the ocelot cost? Well, this whole yard costs under $1,000. Really? The whole yard? Yeah. Gosh, that's good value. And um, has any of the cats ever escaped? No. How many cats do you have here? Three. Wow, that's pretty reliable. So is it easy to install? Yeah, most people install it themselves. Really? They do it themselves? Yeah. Gosh, that's good. And um, what happens if you move house? Well, you can take it with you. Oh, that's great. So Mia, where's it made? Well, it's made here in Australia. My granddad invented it. It's sold here and overseas. Oh, cool. Well, thanks, Mia, for sharing the ocelot system with me. No problem. Now let's go take a closer look. So, Paul, how does this work? Well, Jake, uh, we've got an extruded piece of aluminium here, which has got four paddles on it, as you can see. Uh, these come out of a big aluminium extrusion machine. They just pump out like a big sausage and they just chop it up into sections. And then they powder coat it, they're, they're painted, and uh, then because that centre is completely hollow, we then pop a little axle pin into each end. Yep. So one of those goes in there and I've got one in the other end as well. So there it is with it on. And then these little mounting blocks go onto the fence and then the paddle axle just sits in there and of course it sits on the fence and spins like that. Okay. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, it is. Very genius idea. Today, Claire is going to show us some of the different breeds and colours of horses. So this is Snip here. He's a quarter horse and his colour is bay. The next one we have here is Cody and he's an Arabian and he's a chestnut because you can see how his tail and mane are the same colour as his body. The next one we have is our big one. This is Chief. He a, he's wow. a Clyde Sal cross quarter horse and his colour is brown and white but we call it a paint because he's the quarter horse breed. If they're not quarter horse we call them pintos. He's quite big. He is quite big. So who's this next one here? This next one is Curly and he's a thoroughbred and he's also a bay. Even though he's darker than Snip, if they've got a black mane and tail, they're still called a bay. 
And what about this one up here? This one up here, this is Merlin and he's a yeah. quarter horse. And because he's a quarter horse, he's a paint too. So he's skewbald because he's brown and white. And if they're black and white, they're called piebald. And this next one here is Milo. He's very hairy because he's a yes. Welsh mountain pony. That's his breed. And his colour is grey. And the reason, even though he's white, we actually call them grey. And when they're born, they're not actually born grey. They're actually born a solid colour. So either they're black or chestnut. Wow. Good boy, Milo. And these two cuties here, yeah. this is Pandora. She's a Shetland and she's got a very thick coat as well. Yeah. And her colour is Pinto because she's not a quarter horse and she's skewered, so she's brown and white. And the next one, Cuddles, she's a miniature Shetland Aww. and her colour is black and white, which we call piebald. That's so cute. Wow, there's so much to learn about horses. Thanks for your time today, Claire. That's all right, you're welcome. Okay, Olivia, I've got a joke for you. This joke was sent in by Bonnie Miles, who's five from Tusmore, SA. Are you ready for it? Yep, see if you can make me laugh. Okay, what do you call a monkey with bananas in its ears? I don't know, Jay. What do you call a monkey with bananas in its ears? Anything you like, because it can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> see if you can make Olivia laugh. Send your animal jokes to info at allaboutanimals.tv. Today's age of Australian animal is the fruit bat. I found out that they are endemic to Australia, which means they live nowhere else but Australia. And because of disease, they are very rare. Perry worked with the fruit bats here at Gorge Wildlife Park, so let's go chat to her to find out more. OK, so what we've got here is about 30 fruit bats. Wow. So what we're going to do now is we'll go in and we'll feed them. We can hand feed them. Yep. Like I said, just watch your fingers, <laughs> OK? And as I said, the fruit on the ground they will eventually eat. And then as you can see up there, we've got all the heater for them, which goes on at night because yep. they really are susceptible to the cold. And then we've got the rope which they hang from also to get them off this wire. OK. That's it. You are right? Yeah, no worries. OK, so do you want to go and feed one of these guys? Up to this one? OK. Did you want to take that? And see how you go? Yep, come up. Can you reach him? Oh. Can you? <laughs> and you just eat it? That's it, you're right. Well done. That's it. And he took the whole thing. <laughs> we'll have more here soon. <laughs> it's a big piece, but he'll just bite off and then it'll fall on the ground. And then maybe he'll go and eat that later, or one of the others will come and eat it. But the others will come now because they'll smell. And they'll come over. How long is their wingspan? Their wingspan is around about approximately about a metre. Yeah. So yeah, wow. well, depending on the size. So if it's a smaller baby, obviously it's a smaller wingspan. Yeah. But around about a metre they can spread okay. out to. So are there different species of bats? Yeah, there's around about four different species okay. of bats. And all of them, well most of them actually are native to Australia. There is yeah. one bat that does migrate to New Guinea. But okay. as I said, most of them are, he's coming over now. <laughs> Because he can. Want... Oh, he dropped that bit. He's on me. Hang on. There you go. Oh, you got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so they do everything upside down except for picking up except the scraps. When they, yeah. Or... Except when they get on the floor and pick up the, the leftovers. So do they wrap themselves up to keep themselves warm? They wrap themselves up to keep themselves warm and to sleep. And then what we find in the summer, when it's really hot, they will just fan themselves. Like they'll constantly be flapping their wings to air out their body through and get some air underneath them. And then that keeps them cool. That's awesome. They're actually kind of cute. I'm glad I got to see them. Thanks so much, Kerry. That's not a problem any time. To find out more, go to gorgewildlifepark.com.au. Stay with us because after the break we go to Granite Island in South Australia to hold some adorable little penguins and then Olivia chats with Australian netballer Erin Bell. Today we're at Granite Island in South Australia to have a look at the little penguins. It's pretty cold and windy so let's hope we can find some. To get to Granite Island you can walk across the causeway or jump on the horse-drawn tram from Victor Harbour in South Australia. Go to graniteisland.com.au for more information about the penguin tours. This looks like a good burrow. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, see something in there? Yeah. yeah, there's one in there. Oh, fantastic. Oh, so cute. Oh, we'll get this one out and we'll weigh this one. Yep. Let's 
see what we've got down here. I'll just have a little quick look. Yep. He looks like a... Fantastic. Okay. Here we go. The adult's coming out first. Okay, Jake, would you like to hold this? Sure. Okay. So, one hand up behind the neck, really tight, close to the skull, and then pop that finger through there. Fantastic. That's the way. You got him tight? Yep. Really good. <gasps> He's That's strong. good, but there's more in here. There's more. Oh, more. We're lucky today. Oh. Very lucky. You won't believe how lucky we are. Having the perfect day. Oh. Look what we've got here. Oh. Two little babies. Oh, they are so They're less than a week old. Would you like to hold them, keep them warm? You got them? How cute are they? Okay, I'm just so going to... So, what do the um, penguins eat? The penguins, their main diet is fish. Okay. They don't really eat anything on land, but they catch all of it during the day when they go fishing. So this, <laughs> this adult, that's this lady who's home, sometimes it's the dad. So one day the mum goes fishing and leaves the dad home with the babies and then the swap over a couple of days later. So sometimes okay. they will sit in that burrow for a few days with no food at all until Aww. they get their chance to go fishing. But every night, the, the other adult, the, the other parent, comes home with food to help feed the babies. So we better put these little guys back when you've finished yeah, sure. holding them. Okay. They're so cute. They're just adorable. So how long do they live for? Um, penguins, on average, live about seven years. Seven years? But they can live up to 20. The reason 20? that the average is so low is because they are more likely to die young teenagers Aww. and stuff but once Aww. they become an adult they quite got a good chance of survival. So how many penguins live on Granite Island? Uh, well we, ha we carry out a penguin census every year and last year we had 146. Wow. Um, the next pe penguin census will be held in August this year um, so that's when we'll find out how many exactly we have on this island this year. Okay, so the numbers are quite low. Are, are they declining? Definitely. Um, back in 2000 we had about 1,500 penguins living on the island. Really? So there's oh, been wow. a pretty big decrease in the in the population, mm -hmm. um, which is a bit worrying. What are the penguins biggest threats? We've observed the New Zealand fur seals as being a threat and it seems that their population is increasing. So we can only be happy for those guys because uh, it's great that their population is increasing, but just unfortunately they prey on penguins. Oh, so, oh, quite sad. So that's probably one of the problems that penguins have got is the seals. Thanks Natalie for showing us the little penguins. That's great. I'm glad you came along today to have a look at what we do here. Now we're going to talk to some students from Investigator College. Are you ready for it? Yeah. But do you know what they built? Yeah, I think they built like these nesting boxes for the penguins. For the penguins? Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. So Tilly, what are you doing here today? Our construction students back at school made penguin boxes, so today we're coming in and planting the boxes, so hopefully the penguins will have more homes. Oh, what a fantastic cause. Let's hope this really helps the penguins on Granite Island. Hi Kirsty. Hi Jay. This is the cutest little puppy. How old is she? This is our little sausage dog, Sybil, and she's 14 weeks old. Aww. I've heard that sausage dogs make great family pets because they love company and are very loyal. So why did you decide to get one? Our family decided to get one because we didn't have much outside space so we just needed a little dog. Oh. So Kirsty, why do they have this long narrow shape? They were purposely bred like this to um, chase badgers down burrows in the olden days. Oh. Yeah. Can I have a hold? Yeah, sure. Okay. No. <laughs> And how much bigger will she grow? Well, Sybil's a mini sausage dog, so she'll probably only grow about half her length again yep. and not much higher, so she's pretty low to the ground. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, how long do they live for? They live for about 12 to 14 years. Okay. Yeah. What sort of problems do we have to worry about as an owner? Well, basically their biggest problem is you've got to be really careful about their backs as they're so long. Um, so you cannot overfeed them at all as a puppy or an adult because it will cause back problems. And you've got to be really careful about them walking up and down stairs that are too big for their legs and yep. everything because that can also cause back problems. No. 
Well, thanks, Kirsty, for sharing Sybil with me. No problems, Jake. Today I'm going to chat to one of my favourite netballers, Aaron Bell. Aaron plays goal attack for the Australian Diamonds and is an ambassador for the Royal Society for the Blind. So Aaron, when did you start playing netball? I started playing netball when I was eight years old for a club in Sydney called the Menai Hawks. And did you always want to be a shooter? Um, I started off as a shooter and as I uh, got a bit older I started to play a bit of goal defence, goalkeeper, but then I always went back into goals. I think it's my favourite position, goal attack. So it must be exciting to now play for the Diamonds. Yeah, extremely exciting. Um, moving to Adelaide from Sydney was a big change, but it's, it definitely paid off for me. And playing for Australia at World Champs was just an absolutely amazing feeling. And do you get to do lots of travel? We do. Uh, with our club teams, we get to travel all around Australia and New Zealand. And then with the Australian team, we got to travel to Hong Kong and to Singapore this year. So that was pretty exciting. And what do you like most about netball? I think I love the fact that it keeps me fit and healthy and I've also made some great friendships through netball so I'm able to wake up every day and go to training and, and keep fit with some of my best friends. So how many hours a day do you train? We train for about two hours a day and that varies between on court with the ball and also in the gym doing sprints and weights. So can you explain your role for the RSB? Sure. When I was um, in Adelaide this year, I was asked to be the ambassador for the Royal Society for the Blind. And my role is basically just to create awareness and help promote the, the great things that RSB do for the community here. So Erin, how important are the RSB guide dogs to some people? The RSB guide dogs can be life changing to people who are blind or vision impaired and they let them have a little bit more independence in their life and also act as a really good companion and a friend. Well, that's amazing. Thanks for your time today, Erin, and good luck with playing for Australia. Thanks, Olivia. Now it's time for me to show you some photos of our viewers and their pets. Thanks for all of you for sending them in. I love looking through them all. So let's go check three out now. This is Natasha from Leighton Buzzer Bedfordshire in the UK with her puppy, Benjamin. Benjamin is a Lasso Apso, which originally came from Tibet. He's one and a half years old and he loves playtime. He loves going out for big, long walks. And sometimes he enjoys his adventures so much, he ends up in another neighbourhood. Natasha is a photographer who loves taking pictures of him. This is Brittany from Hobart in Tasmania with her dog Ruby. Ruby is Brittany's adorable beagle puppy. She is just over a year old and her favourite food is cheese. She loves to follow Brittany around everywhere she goes and Ruby loves a scratch on her back and jumps into Brittany's lap for kisses. This is three-year-old Maddie from Myrtle Bank in South Australia with Cooper the Million Dollar Cat and Daffy Duckling. Cooper the Cat has had lots of operations on his hips and ears. He always has a scared look on his face, so I guess he's a real scaredy cat. And Daffy is a duckling Maddie found in her backyard pool. Daffy thinks Maddie is her mum and follows her everywhere she goes. Weren't they all great photos? You can have your pet's photos on here too. All you have to do is email three photos of you and your pet plus five interesting facts to info allaboutanimals.tv and make sure you go to our website to enter our great competitions and maybe win some amazing prizes for your pet. Join us again for our next show as we travel to Sydney to have a look at some giant crabs at Ocean World Manly. Then I go to Featherdale Wildlife Park to meet the beautiful Erin McNaught and some very cheeky koalas. We hope you enjoyed watching another great show of All About Animals. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can keep up to date with what we're doing. Oh, and remember to check out the great competitions on our website. And thank you for watching All About Animals. See you next time. Also brought to you by Betts Kids Westfield Marion, Esprit Kids, Pumpkin Patch, JR's Surf and Ski, Breeders Choice, JJ's and Bonnet Saddle World.